Hello, welcome to the CAT Mock 8 analysis. My name is Savitri Krishnamurti and I will take you through this mock, the strategies and I will explain the questions, every answer, why it is a particular answer and not the other. CAT Mock 8, if you take in it uh, or as declared by most students, they found the test to be moderate to difficult. All right. Why do we say that? There were four passages out of which one passage could be called easy because it was easy to read and the questions were easy to read. These two passages were of moderate level difficulty and one was difficult. Which passage was easy? There was one on words and Oxford English Dictionary which was quite easy, very easy to answer questions because it read easily. There were two passages, one on tea and one on a book on evolution and on human history, which were moderately difficult. And there was one passage on liberalism, which was difficult. We will start with passage one. All right. Passage one was about a book, the dawn of everything. It was a moderately difficult passage because the passage talks of a book, talks of two theories of human history, and there, the questions are about older theory, new theory, older theory. So if you do not pay attention to the uh, main points, you would be likely to make a lot of mistakes. All right. I will take you through a summary of the passage first before we move on to uh, answering the questions. Last year, a book called The Dawn of Everything announced that most of what we think we know about human history is wrong. A book was released which said everything you know about human history is wrong. Who is this? Who said this? Its co-authors, David Kreber and David Vengro. So both David said everything you know about human history is wrong. They took aim. That means they targeted the established story that has been given by brand writers. And who are the brand writers of human history? Jared Diamond, Yuval Noah Harari, Steven Pinker. What is their story? They say that for most prehistory, before history was written, that period is called prehistory. So for most of prehistory, we lived in a sm in small egalitarian bands. Egalitarian means an equitable, equal kind of society. We lived in small egalitarian bands of hunter-gatherers and it was only with the agricultural revolution <clears throat> about 12,000 years ago that we adopted larger forms of social organization. So in prehistory times, we lived in small bands. After agriculture was established, we moved on to bigger organizational form of living, leading to complex hierarchical communities. All of that, they argue. Now, who is the they we are talking about? The new authors, the both the Davids is based on outdated information. This theory is wrong based on outdated information. Clear? Second, in their best-selling books, Collapse, Sapiens and the Better Angels of Our Nature, he, this there talks about Collapse, Jared Diamond, Sapiens, you all know Harari, the Better Angels of Our Nature, Stephen Pinker. These authors who told us we lived in egalitarian bands and then moved on to complex hierarchical societies after agriculture, these people wrote all these books, Collapse, Sapiens and Better Angels of Our Nature. Those authors drew heavily on archaeological and anthropological findings. So they relied on archaeological and anthropological sources. But here's the question. None of them are archaeologists or anthropologists. These three authors who wrote, who used archaeological and anthropological evidence were not archaeologists or anthropologists. By contrast, Graeber, who died two years ago, was thought by many to be one of the leading anthropologists of his generation. Neither was Jared Diamond an anthropologist, archaeologist, nor was uh, you all know Harari, nor is you all know Harari, nor uh, Steven Pinker. But Graeber, one of the co-authors of the Dawn of Civilization, who died two years ago, is one of the leading anthropologists of his generation. And his co-author, Vengro, is a well-respected archaeologist. Now you are following the trend of the argument. First paragraph, whatever has been written about human history is wrong. 
people used uh, all these famous authors used anthropological and archaeological sources and findings but they were not professional anthropologists and archaeologists on the other hand these new authors are that's what has been established both disciplines which disciplines archaeology and anthropology have been subject to academic sniffiness disdain you sniff means you look down on somebody so anthropology and archaeology have been looked down by the academic community why because they've been dismissed as easy options with one foot in the in the sciences and the other in the humanities so archaeology and anthropology are sitting in the middle they can neither be called science nor can be called humanities and academic world has treated them with sniffiness disdain or kind of looking down on them condescension the difficulty in acquiring empirical evidence is common to both fields it's very difficult to find empirical evidence empirical evidence means evidence based on experiment observation like physical sciences are empirical sciences physics or chemistry so it's difficult to do that because sociology and anthropology has to do with human behavior with human organization with human communities so it's difficult to find empirical evidence and that is the cause <clears throat> say critics of too much imaginative interpretation because you can't find empirical evidence what do you tend to do you use too much imaginative interpretation in these uh, subjects which is why they have been dismissed with academic sniffiness clear next the dawn of everything this is the new book written by david graeber and ven gro argues that if there is creative myth making they say okay people have been accusing anthropology and archaeology of having creative myth making because you have very little evidence so you kind of make up imagination to interpret evidence you use imagination to make up evidence they said if there has been creative myth making it has been most often carried out by outsiders economists psychologists psychologists and historians who have ignored modern scholarship and used old studies to rehash an inaccurate picture of human development so what do these new authors say okay they say if there is such myth making and imagination in these subjects this is because of outsiders who have uh, contributed to the subject they have used some old evidence and made rehashed means uh, mixed it up in a new version and given it to you according to graeber and ven gro that picture comes in two different forms which picture the picture which has been given about these subjects by outsiders it comes in two forms what are the two forms either it's drawn by neo hobbesians so one group of outsiders writing on anthropology and archaeologists can be called neo hobbesians people like pinker who argue that modern civilization is a story of progress away from our nasty brutish origins this is what think earlier we had nasty brutish life people led hobbes said life of man was nat short nasty brutal something something and only after formation of the state uh, our life improved so steven pinker and others like him are neo hobbesians who said earlier life was nasty and brutish and we progress to a better life the second group is neo russians rousseau was a french uh, philosopher who gave his theory and these people follow rousseau in saying and who are they diamond uh, jared diamond and you all know harari who associate civilizational progress with the loss of freedom so they said that as people progress they lost as civilization progressed and developed people lost freedom so one which said we uh, lived a better life and other one said we uh, progress but we lost our freedom so these are the two camps here but the moment you come across but in the passage wherever remember they're giving the other point of view to these so they are different in the, in the form of either following hobbes or rousseau but both camps say the author endorse the idea of historical determinism by which humans have gone inexorably inevitably relentlessly without any chance of uh, uh, slowing down or, or changing course 
from cave dwellers to car drivers, seed sowers to citizens. So what is common to both the theories that we have progressed from one form to another through historical determinism. We just had no, no uh, say in our uh, development from cave de de dwellers to car drivers or whatever. We just moved on okay, in a predetermined path. Both of them agree with that. All right, <clears throat> next paragraph. Greber and Vengro reject this teleological approach. Teleological approach is approach talking about uh, development, uh, which goes on because of a function that uh, is performed, that you, you develop through functionality. Uh, they reject this approach and instead place the emphasis for change on human choice. They said, no, no, it was not we developed because it suited us or the suited circumstances were suitable. So that's how progress happened. Progress happened through human choice. We had a choice in the way we developed. They did not believe in determinism. They did not believe in the teleological approach. They said, no, we had a choice and a say in the way we progressed. They argue our prehistory was not uniform. The period before history was written, prehistory was not uniform. It was made of many, myriad, means countless, social arrangements, some involving large cities, some monarchical, some egalitarian, and some with slave labor. There were different types of organizations. There was monarchy, there were large cities, there was slavery, there were all kinds of organizations, even in prehistory. For a long time after the arrival of agriculture, the earlier guys said, no, after agriculture, we came to more complex organizational structure. These people said for a long time after the arrival of agriculture, there was no fixed model of community organization, but rather a rich diversity of societies using agriculture, but not succumbing to its regimented social demands. Even after agriculture came, people used agriculture, but they were not... Their life, their form of organization was not dictated to by agriculture. Clear? So we got, so far you have the flow of ideas. Now this should be done fast when you do it in the exam. Reading and restating has to happen at the same time. Greber was a renowned anarchist and activist. So he did not just believed, was an anarchist, didn't believe in established set of laws, believed. He was also an activist. He promoted his thoughts through action. He, he was involved in the Occupy Wall Street movement at the outset, which is often attributed with having coined the slogan, we are the 99%. The Occupy Wall Street movement, look it up, was about, uh, uh, it was a protest that started in New York about the inequality uh, that was happening in current temporary society. Unsurprisingly then, now this is the, the last paragraph of the passage, Often you have to pay more attention to the first and the last paragraph because the last paragraph is where the author ties up his points and maybe comes up with some sort of a final word or a conclusion. Unsurprisingly then, the book seeks to do more than rewrite the past. The book is not just about human history. It doesn't just rewrite the past. It does something more. What does it do? It also wants to use that past to provide political inspiration for today. So it has a political agenda. What is that? If a genuine sense of freedom in how we organize, organize ourselves was fundamental to our prehistory, they say, then perhaps our prehistory is a key to our liberation in the future. If it was freedom, the sense of choice, the sense of freedom that uh, structured our prehistory, then we have to use that same freedom to try to uh, fashion our future. Mm -hmm. As the advertising campaign puts it, a phrase that Graeber liked to use, it's time to change the course of history. And how do you change the course of history? Starting with the past. Very interesting statement uh, there. All right. Now, let's look at the questions. Question one. All of the following statements can be inferred from the passage except. That means find the option which cannot be inferred from the passage. Archaeology and anthropology leave too much to imaginative interpretations. Has this been uh, somewhere has that been mentioned? Yes, 
it said that uh, the critics why do they look down on uh, anthropology and archaeologists it's treated with academic sniffiness one is because there's no a uh, real empirical evidence and because of that uh, a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of interpretation done and that interpretation is not based on empirical evidence but imagination right so one can be inferred graeber and van grave have accepted the notion of historical determin determinism in characterizing prehistorical societies was it graeber and van grove remember graeber and van grove are the people who've written the new book which says all that you knew of human history is wrong they didn't believe in historical determination who did the earlier authors the pinker the jared diamonds the uh, you all know a harari so that is the answer that cannot be inferred they they believed it was not historical determination it was determinism it was human choice therefore b contradicts what has been given in the passage so that cannot be inferred that is our answer let's look let quickly look at c and d many scholars have characterized prehistorical societies based on the forms of thinking of neo hobbesians or neo rusians yes half of them he said that the uh, people who've written about human history belong to two categories broadly one is pre hobbesians who said we had a horrible so a uh, brutal brutish life and we moved on to progress better life the second are the neo rusians who said with progress we lost our freedom so that's how th the new book says so this can be inferred the book the dawn of everything is not wholly a historical rewrite can be inferred in the last paragraph he says it was it is not just a rewriting of history it's also got some political agenda some political it, it tries to serve as a political inspiration right so d also can be inferred therefore my correct answer would be b i hope you got that right